One of the professors here is doing research on geosynchronous satellites and wants to mount a satellite dish to the roof of the building to read data from the satellites. Rather than manually calibrate the dish's position on the roof, only to have to come back down to his office to read the results, a device was to be designed to enable him to change the dish's position from the comfort of his office. The device's assembly has broken, been broken down into two main parts, the hardware, or the actual device itself, and the software, which is the code that is run through the microcontroller to ensure this device does as required. Applications of technology similar to this can be found in satellite arrays such as the Allen Array located at the SETI Institute. By having these satellites in synchronous movement, they can be engaged to focus on a single point, with each having a different offset with respect to their location to one another. The objective of our design is to attach our 10-turn pot to the dish positioner apparatus so that the rubber stopper will be able to continuously rotate as the dish rotates to supply feedback to the system. Here we attach our feedback pot to the same platform that the motor is on in order for the acrylic to ride in between our feedback pot and the motor. With a screw, a washer, and a nut along with a piece of metal, we were able to tighten the feedback pot down enough where it would stay in place and at the same time have enough downward force to continually rotate without slipping. Here you have just your basic power supply. This power supply is going to deliver power to our motor. And as this motor rotates, it's going to move the acrylic along the top side of the rubber stopper that's connected to the motor. This power supply will also deliver power to our H-bridge. This H-bridge will control the forward and the reverse function of the motor. Once this H-bridge has received the signal to initiate the motor to turn, either forward or reverse, the corresponding LED will light up to ensure you that the right direction is ongoing. As the motor is turning, our 10-turn pot will ride along the top side of the acrylic and turn as the acrylic moves across it. This 10-turn pot will act as our feedback to determine whether or not the motor should be moving forward, reverse, or not at all, based on an input from the user. The first objective, as with any code, was to declare the variables. Here it was specified which ports of the microcontroller would receive or translate information, as well as the data types of the variables that would later be used for calculation. Next, a portion of these variables were initialized to specified values which will be used later. The feedback signal from the 10-turn pot was also converted to units that will later be comparative to the user input. The controller now begins the sequence it will run for the remainder of the program usage. It compares the feedback signal to a finite range near the specified angular value. Since the user input was initialized to zero, upon initial activation of the controller, the device will autocorrect, moving the satellite to the zero degree position. For post-activation sequences, the controller will compare the user input. By providing a small range of correct values, we can account for inconsistent feedback signals from the turn pot. If this argument is met, the user is prompted for their input. Finally, the input is scaled based on mechanical factors of the apparatus, such as degree range and gear ratio. Next, the feedback signal is reevaluated and the counter is incremented to specify one iteration of the sequence has been completed. The max and min window values are also calculated, which will be used next to correct the satellite position. These values will account for small inconsistencies in the feedback signal. Here, the controller compares the feedback signal to the window values, thereby determining the direction the motor must engage to reach its destination. If the feedback signal falls within the window, the motor is not engaged. Finally, the controller checks the loop counter for a finite value, and if equivalent, will display signal values to the user. This function is necessary due to the fact that the controller is performing thousands of calculations per second, and if displayed after each iteration, the user would not have ample time to read them. All of the previous functions are placed within a loop so that an infinite number of sequences may be run if necessary. Currently, a small amount of voltage is being run through the motor, which slows the turning of the satellite dish to a crawl. The problem with increasing the voltage to the motor to increase the speed, however, is that if the speed was increased too much, then the motor and turn pot might overshoot and run off the acrylic, rendering the entire device inoperable. Code could have been written into the microcontroller so that the motor speed would increase if the turn pot was far outside the acceptable range and decrease as the turn pot got closer to the range. However, that code would require knowledge of pulse width modulation, 
where the microcontroller changes the duty cycle of the power source, which seemed an unnecessary risk to undertake for this device.